Hello friends. So we'll begin with the module on um, internal flows today. All this while we've actually been discussing about uh, flows that uh, over a flat plate or basically external flows, but we focused primarily on flat plate flows so far. And we looked at uh, both laminar and uh, turbulent boundary layers on uh, flat plates. With that understanding, of course, so the flows, the characteristic of these flows is that there is only a solid on one side of the flow. The rest of the flow is not bounded by any surface. And therefore, you have distances going for to white ends to infinity. And as y goes large, as y go white ends to infinity, the velocity becomes equal to the free stream velocity, which is unaffected by the plate. So this is what we were looking at in the past. The next, next set of uh, uh, cases that we will be looking at, or the next uh, class of problems that we will be looking at, would be those which are completely confined by walls on all sides. So the flow enters the confined space and flows through it. So there is a certain uh, wall, the impermeable wall that is bounding the flow, with, through which the flow cannot go. And therefore, once the flow enters the duct, the same mass flow rate would be passing through the duct so long as the flow is steady. So the mass entering the duct should be able to leave. So per unit time, whatever mass enters the duct will be leaving. So in every cross section, I'll have the same mass flow rate so long as the flow is steady. So this is one of the characteristics of uh, internal flows. Even in the internal flows, when the flow enters, for example, let us consider the simplest of those internal flows in which there are two parallel plates. So you can say there is one flat plate and another flat plate, and there is a flow that is going between the two parallel plates. So you can actually consider this as if there is a flow over a flat plate, which is the flow plate below, and there is a flow over a flat plate, flat plate which is the plate above, the boundary layer gets formed underneath. And these two boundary layers eventually grow and at the middle of the uh, middle plane of the two uh, plates, they go and meet. So until such time the two boundary layers meet, there is a certain kind of flow which is closer to the boundary layer flows that we uh, looked at in terms of uh, behavior because one plate does not know the presence of the other plate until such time that the boundary layer of that plate interacts with the boundary layer of this plate. So there is a region where the flow is still de facto partly unconfined if you might want to say that. It's actually confined but the presence of one plate is not felt by the other in terms of the flow. So such flows are still called developing flows. The flow in the in between the ducts is developing, in between the plates is developing. And after the boundary layers meet, you have a different kind of characteristic where the velocity profile, that is the distribution of velocity between these two plates, if I call the direction between the plates or the coordinate between the plates as y, then the velocity profile with respect to y between the plates would have fully developed and there will be no further change in the velocity profile after the point where the boundary layers meet. So then you get another category of flow where the behavior of the flow stops changing with the x direction in terms of the velocity, velocity gradient, shear stresses and so on and so forth. So in internal flows, therefore, you would be looking at fully developed flows as one segment, which is the simplest of uh, the internal flows. And then we will be looking at the developing region of the flows. Now, because we have already understood uh, boundary layer flows to a certain extent, we can use that to understand how much length would it take from the inlet before the flow becomes fully developed. Right? So what we call as the entry length or the development length of the flow can be estimated first simply through a back of envelope order of magnitude calculation. 
and then to a slightly more rigorous but still approximate integral method. We will not be looking at the more detailed uh, analytical solution in this case in uh, uh, as part of this course, but then we can also use the results that have been obtained using that. So that is to understand what is the entry length, how much, how the flow behaves in the entry length region, and how can we mathematically evaluate the distance that the flow would take before it fully develops. Once that is done, then we can start looking at the fully developed flows. Okay. We look at the flows whose velocity profiles have been developed. Let us look at what that velocity profile should look like. So from order of magnitude analysis, we can reduce the uh, momentum equation and continuity equation to simpler equations which can be analytically solved and the behavior of the fully developed flow can be easily described for the velocity profile. Once we do that, then once the velocity profile is known, then we can also look at how the temperature profile develops in the same velocity profile. Okay, So we can look at thermally developing flow, thermally fully developed flow in the presence of fully developed velocity profile. So completely fully developed flow both in terms of hydrodynamic and the thermal aspects. So you can already see the branches of uh, the study and all of this we will be first doing for the laminar flow. So you will take laminar flow between two par par parallel planes and look at the order of magnitude analysis and the integral methods for the entry length to determine the entry length expression. And then after that, we will be looking at the fully developed flow for velocity profile and fully developed flow for both velocity and temperature profiles fully developed. Then we can look at and look at the different boundary conditions for the duct where there is constant temperature of the walls or the constant heat flux in the walls. And for each of these cases, we will basically have to get expressions for the Nusselt number. So for the hydrodynamic flow, we will be getting the skin friction coefficient and thereby determining the pressure drop that would happen when the flow goes through the duct. So that is one part. And then we will be looking at the Nusselt number and uh, looking at the way the Nusselt number uh, behaves when the flow is fully developed for constant wall temperature and constant wall flux. And we will do it simply for parallel plates channel and extend the results to circular work ducts. These are the two things that uh, we will uh, do. And uh, we can easily extend these principles to ducts of any uh, cross section. Okay. So that we will uh, complete and then we will start looking at developing flow where the velocity profile is developed, but the temperature uh, boundary condition is just imposed. So you have a, a fully developed velocity profile and the temperature profile starts developing. So thermally developing flow, how does it behave? Uh, and uh, how does the result number in thermally developing flow vary with uh, actual distance? This is the next thing that we will look at, thermally developing flows. And eventually, we will also try to look at simultaneously developing so if you have a duct in which there is a velocity profile and temperature profile imposed at the inlet and the duct has a temperature boundary condition and no slip boundary conditions along the wall, then in the region where both velocity profile and temperature profile are developing, how it behaves and what happens with Frankel number, the different values of Frankel number. So all of this would constitute the, what we would study under uh, internal flows for laminar flows and then we will extend the understanding of turbulence that we had and the laminar duct flows that we do in order to understand turbulent duct flows. So this is the roadmap for the entire internal flows uh, module. We will try to complete this in about four or at most five lectures okay, including both the laminar and the turbulent aspects. So that is our uh, uh, plan for the next uh, few lectures. So we are today in lecture number 14 and so we will probably be going up to lecture number 17 or 18 with this and after that we will uh, go to the next module on natural convection.
which we will study. So now uh, with that, let's go to the whiteboard and uh, try to uh, uh, understand the basics of internal flows as uh, we would like to study. So we'll start with laminar internal flows. Okay. So suppose I have two parallel plates. Okay. I'll try to make them parallel. So now we are not interested in what is going outside the two parallel plates, but we'll be inside looking at or we'll be interested in what goes through them. So say let us say at this plane, which is uh, x is equal to zero, the velocity profile is uniform velocity. Let us say the same velocity is there in the entire cross section. Okay. And let us call this as u bar, which is actually the mean velocity through the duct. It remains the mean velocity at all points. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, configuration that I have. So, I have two plates. One plate below and one plate above. So, this is the lower plate and this is the upper plate and this is the mid plane between them. Let us say the distance between the two plates is capital D. Okay. Let us not mistake it uh, for, um, uh, let us not mistake it for uh, circular pi. This is a parallel plate flow. Here the D is basically the distance between the two flat plates. Okay. So what happens now is that there is a boundary layer that will start developing from this plate. And similarly, there is another boundary layer which will start developing from this plate. And they both would meet at some distance from the inlet. Let me call that the length LE, which is the entry length. Okay. So this is X is equal to LE. So this distance from inlet up to that point where the flow is, the two boundary layers are developing and meeting each other is called the entry length. And after this, the velocity profile uh, inside the uh, duct. So at the inlet, I have said the velocity profile is flat. So if I plot um, u versus y, so if I, uh, for a change, I take um, uh, y here and u here, okay, instead of the other way around, then the velocity profile is plotted or shown using arrows to fill this rectangular velocity profile, okay. So that is the, at the inlet. So as we go in, you will expect that there will be a boundary layer development and therefore the velocity profile inside the boundary layer here will go more like this. So as we go in the boundary layer, there will be a uh, profile and then the velocity will be uniform here. Similarly, at the bottom here, there will be a boundary layer here and the flow will become uniform. So there will be uniform velocity in the middle and there will be boundary layers at the two ends. So this is how it will develop and the region between the uh, boundary layers will go on decreasing and the boundary layer region becomes thicker and thicker as we go uh, inside and at uh, eventually when the flow uh, meets you will get a velocity profile uh, okay so here it will be more like uh, constant here and varying up to that and eventually at this location it will be uh, a profile which is varying all the way up to here from here and all the way up to here from here and you get a profile which looks more complete and after this location, at every other location inside the duct, if I look at the velocity profile, this velocity profile will not change any further. Okay. It will uh, remain exactly what I have drawn here. I have drawn here too many velocity profiles. Let me just draw one. Okay. So the entire velocity profile that I have drawn here, this velocity profile uh, will remain the same at every other section. 
So this velocity profile is called the fully developed velocity profile. Okay, this is the L3 length. Okay. Now this is the uh, fully developed velocity profile. So after this, the velocity profile will remain the same, which will basically mean that um, since the boundary layers have met, there will be no further y directional movement of the flow. The boundary layer will actually displace some of the fluid from uh, here into the uh, core region because the velocity it cannot handle the velocity profile as it is outside. It has lesser velocity there, so some fluid comes out. So there is a, a y velocity there. But after the boundary layers have met, there will be no y velocity in both directions because uh, the boundary layers have already expelled however much fluid they could expel. And so the y velocity will become 0. So v goes to 0 after the entry length. And uh, if I look at the continuity equation, which says del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to 0, since v is 0 throughout, del u by del x also becomes 0. And therefore, we get these two. So these two are characteristic of the fully developed region. Okay. So what we will first do is, now we have understood what we mean by the entry region or the entry length and what we mean by fully developed flow in terms of the velocity profile. Right? So in the entry region, the velocity profile will go on changing because the border layer grows thicker and thicker and so the velocity profile is undergoing a development and when the two border layers meet here, it becomes a fully developed velocity profile beyond which actually both plates do sense the presence of the other. Until then, the, uh, this plate has the effect of only this border layer, this plate has the effect of only this border layer, and they have not interacted with each other. But in the fully developed region, the whole duct becomes a single flow, and there is a single velocity profile, which does not change with x. So del u by del x is 0, which means that if I have a certain velocity u at any y, then this at the same uh, y, I will have the same u here as well. The u does not change with x, but u changes with y, of course. Okay, so that is why there is a velocity profile that looks like this. So at the center you have a larger velocity, and at the walls you have zero velocity, and there is a smooth variation of the velocity from the zero to the maximum. Okay, so that is how the velocity profile is there, and that is called a fully developed velocity profile. So now what we will do first is to work out what this entry length should be, how can we calculate the entry length, and uh, how much distance would we need to move into the duct in order to get the flow to develop fully. So that is one uh, thing that we will look at. We will look at the, that using two methods, one very gross and simple method, and the second one where we will we can allow for uh, the solution of these equations using approximate velocity profiles in the boundary layer and in the uh, core, so with uh, in, in the central region. Okay. So with that, uh, uh, we will determine the entry length expression, and we will uh, write down expressions for that. And after that, we will focus on the fully developed velocity profile. So these are the two things that we will do today with respect to the uh, velocity profiles. Okay. Let's go to the next slide, and. Uh, So um, entry length and E is basically nothing but the boundary layer, uh, uh, the x coordinate along the boundary layer, where the boundary layer thickness becomes equal to d by 2. So this is x location where delta at x is equal to d by 2. Okay, so this is basically what we saw in the previous uh, slide. So this distance is d by 2. Okay, so the distance x at which the boundary layer thickness grows to d by 2 is what we call as L. Okay, so um, if we uh, go back and uh, think about the flat plate boundary layer, we said that in flat plate boundary layer, delta by x 
is equal to 0 4.92 into Rex to the power of minus half. This is the expression that we said. So, suppose we make this as approximately 5 in order to simplify the case, then um, Le, sorry, um, d by 2, delta is equal to d by 2 divided by Le, okay, so that is the difference here. This is equal to, let us say, 5 times Rex. Rex is what? In this case, u bar is the free spin velocity, okay, into x, which will again be equal to Le divided by mu, this whole thing raised to the power of minus half, okay. Now, if I um, write this, this minus half, let me just invert this, this is equal to 5 times um, uh, square root of mu divided by u bar Le. Now, since the uh, uh, flow that we are considering is not a boundary layer flow, but it is actually a flow between uh, two ducts and the characteristic uh, dimension here is the distance between the ducts, this distance between the plates D. So, uh, we would like to write the Reynolds number in terms of D and not Le. So, let us uh, do that here. So, let us uh, come to this. So, this is D by 2 divided by Le is equal to phi times square root of mu divided by, let us write u bar into d and then you will get a uh, square root of square root of d over l e. That is the thing that I will get. So, what I will do now is to bring this d down here and this d by l e to this side. So, I will get uh, square root of d by L e is equal to 10 times square root of mu by mu bar d, which is nothing but 10 times R e d raised to the power of minus r. Okay. So, uh, square root of, so this is not equal to, so this implies this. So, square root of d by L e. Now, I was trying to look for what is L e by d, that is the entry length as a function of uh, the diameter. So, let me just square both sides. I will get d by L e is equal to 100 times R e d to the power of minus 1. Okay. So, now if I invert this, I will get L e by d, which is the entry length as a function of the distance between the plates is equal to 1 by this, which will be 0 0.01 times Red. Okay. So, this is the expression that we get by using the flat plate uh, boundary layer uh, thickness relationship. Okay. So, we can say that uh, if the Reynolds number between the flat plates Red is, let us say, 1000, then 0 0.01 times 1000 is 10. So, the length Le would be 10 times the diameter. Okay. So, that is what you will get from this expression. And say if this Red is uh, 10,000, then it will be 100 times D and so on. So, that is what um, this one gives. But uh, we will come to see later that in um, duct flows, the Reynolds number for uh, flow to remain laminar uh, should be typically under 2000 with respect to the D being the hydraulic diameter and not the spacing between the plates. So, we will come to that. So, if we do that, then up to the limit of the Reynolds number remaining laminar, okay, the Le by D will be governed by this relationship because this expression that we brought from um, uh, flat plate relationship is for a laminar boundary layer. So, that is the expression that we get. But there is a problem in uh, this expression. What is the problem in this expression? In this we assume that the uh, free stream velocity remains u bar. Okay. But if I go back to this slide, I will see that if I have moved from the inlet where the velocity is u bar everywhere to some distance inside the duct, then there is a certain amount of 
boundary layer formation that has already happened. So, some amount of mass which was be supposed to be flowing here with this velocity is now flowing at a much lower velocity and therefore has moved out. So, the velocity that you get in the flat region here, this will be greater than u bar in order to conserve the mass because the integral of u dy between the two flat plates, integral of rho u dy is the mass flow rate. Okay. Because if I take unit depth in the direction perpendicular to this, then rho into u into a, rho is the density, u is the velocity at any uh, segment and the uh, area uh, through which the flow is going is if I take a small strip, it is dy multiplied by unit depth. So, this is the integral mass flow rate. So, if I do this, in this one since uh, and the density being constant, I can just take this out m dot, m dot by rho will be equal to integral of u dy. So, this is a, a constant. What mass has entered here at steady state has to leave from here. And since it is a constant, m dot by rho, which is the volumetric flow rate, also remains constant. This is between minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 if I take the y coordinate from here, okay. So, the integral of uh, uh, u dy from minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 has, remain a constant, has to remain a constant, okay, which basically means that if the velocity has decreased somewhere, then it has to increase somewhere. So, that if the u dy here is smaller, then the u dy here makes up for it and therefore, the average remains the u bar dy, okay. So, it basically means that the uh, velocity here at the center line, if I look at the velocity at the center line as uc, the u center line is going to go on increasing starting from u bar all the way up to this point. And after this point, it stops increasing, it remains at the same maximum. But so, this maximum will have to be greater than u bar by the extent of the fluid that is displaced from the part of the boundary layer so that the total, the area under this curve should be equal to the area under this box, okay. So, that is what uh, is important. So, what happens actually then is that if you look at along the boundary layer, the free stream velocity, the u, the u bar that you took actually now should be replaced with the u c, which is the free stream velocity for both sides of uh, flows this u c goes on increasing as you go into inside the duct and therefore, you cannot use a constant uh, u bar and derive this expression. Then you will actually get an entry length which is smaller. You need to get a larger uh, entry length for which you will need to use the, the velocity profile appropriately. So, in order to do that, we can actually uh, use the integral method, okay. So, if I uh, Take the uh, center line uh, streamline in this one. The streamline along the center line here, then that streamline is always invested until this point, and therefore I can use the Bernoulli's equation for uh, the center line. So uh, the acceleration of that can be quantified by saying that. Uh, P at the center line plus uh, rho u c squared by 2 is a constant, okay. So, then I can say with respect to um, x, if I differentiate, then I will get d p by d x, okay. Um, or if you would like, let us keep it as partial derivative at the moment because we have still not shown um, that it should be total derivative. Plus, if I keep um, uh, the rho as a constant, then rho stays here, it will become u c del u c by del x, because the u c square becomes 2 u c del u c by del x and the 2 gets cancelled. So, this is your expression, this is equal to 0 or if I divide by rho, then the rho comes here, 1 by rho d p by d x plus u c del u c by del x is equal to 0, okay. Now, since the center line velocity is only a function of x, it can be written as d by d x because it is a velocity at one location. So, it is u c d u c by d x and uh, uh, 
that the pressure at the center line, at the moment let us write it as dPc by dx. But we will find that since it is a boundary layer flow, the uh, y direction variation of pressure is uh, negligible and therefore you can actually uh, keep this as uh, dp by dx itself. So this is uh, the expression that uh, we will be uh, using in order to uh, uh, get the uh, variation in center line velocity for uh, given flow. So now let us um, write the governing equations. The governing equations are del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to 0, u del u by del x or let us write it in the integral uh, form. So it will be del by del x of uh, u square plus del by del y of u v. Okay. Uh, is equal to minus 1 by rho del p by del x plus mu times del squared u by del x square plus del squared u by del y square. Similarly, the Vanaka v direction velocity del by del x of u v plus del by del y of v square is equal to minus 1 by rho del p by del y plus mu times del square v by del x square plus del square v by del y square. Okay. So, um, since uh, by order of magnitude we can show that uh, the velocity in the y direction is much smaller as compared to the velocity in the x direction just like in the case of uh, boundary layer flows. We will neglect this um, entire uh, equation from picture and solve only for these two uh, equations. So let us then, uh, this is completely neglected. We will then integrate this using the uh, Leibniz integration. So uh, we will basically get uh, in integrated across the boundary layer. So let us take integrated from 0 to um, d by 2 which is up to the center line. So you say d by dx of integral from y is equal to 0 to d by 2 of u square dy that is the first term plus this is integral with respect to y so the differential will disappear when I um, do the uh, integration. So it will become uv at uh, d by 2 minus u v at uh, 0, okay. this is equal to minus 1 by rho uh, del p by del x and the, because all of this is uh, independent of uh, y, so I will get uh, d by 2 here because it will be integral of uh, dy from 0 to uh, d by 2 plus mu times um, you will get um, the uh, x direction uh, term again uh, by order of magnitude uh, this term becomes much smaller as compared to uh, this term. So you will just integrate that term. So you will get uh, del u by del y at uh, d by 2 minus del u by del y at 0. Okay. Now, uh, in order to get all the various terms, this uh, we know that velocities at 0 are both 0 and at the center line, del u by del y because it is a symmetric uh, velocity profile, this will also uh, be 0, this is because of symmetry and this is because of wall, right. So, um, now we are uh, actually looking at um, the boundary layer. So y is equal to 0 is at the uh, wall and y is equal to d by 2 is at the uh, center line. The, that is we are looking at the coordinate system with respect to the lower plane. So if I uh, 
take instead of this y coordinate if i take the y coordinate with respect to this plate then this is the uh, y coordinate that i am uh, use right now so in that y coordinate i will see that at y is equal to 0 the uh, velocities are both zero because it's a solid one and at y equal to d by 2 since the profile is symmetric there will be the del by del y is zero at the symmetric place so that is the condition that i have written here so now at uh, d by 2 this u at d by 2 is going to be equal to u center line okay and v at d by 2 we can get from the continuity equation like we used to uh, do in the earlier case and uh, so uh, what you will write is you will write integrate the continuity equation and write uh, d by dx of integral from 0 to d by 2 of u dy okay plus uh, v at uh, d by 2 minus v at 0 is equal to 0 now v at 0 is 0 so that is gone so I can write u v at d by 2 is equal to dy dx of uh, integral from y is equal to 0 to d by 2 of u dy okay so uh, once I have done that uh, I can um, put that into this expression so this expression will basically give me um, uv at uh, sorry uv at uh, d by 2 is equal to uh, uc into d by dx of uh, integral from 0 to d by 2 of um, of um, u dy okay and uh, since i would like to uh, write this uh, in uh, the same form as this so that I can take all of this into the integral I have to take this uc into the expression so this I can uh, write it as uh, d by dx of uc integral from 0 to uh, this uc is of course a function of uh, y also it's a, a function independent of y so I can take it into the integral without a difficulty so integral from uh, 0 to d by 2 of u u c d y minus uh, you can say so it is actually uh, this is the differential of the product so that will be u c times uh, del d by dx of integral plus uh, integral of uh, u dy times d u c by dx so it will be d u c by dx times integral from 0 to y of u dy okay so now if I put these terms into uh, this expression and then this uh, 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 mu or uh, mu times del u by del y at 0 is actually nothing but tau wall by rho because mu into del u by del y is uh, tau wall and so mu it will be a minus tau wall by rho that you will get for this expression so if I put all of these into the equation I will get uh, uh, equation which looks like d by dx of integral from 0 to d by 2 of u squared minus u c u okay so where I can take out the u and write it will be u u c u minus u c okay so that uh, I can write it in that form um, u times u minus u c dy okay so that is basically um, this term taken into account and this term taken into account okay so then this term will have to come which will be minus uh, d u c by dx times integral of u dy minus d u c by dx integral from 0 to d by 2 of u dy okay and this is equal to minus 1 by rho 
del p by del x plus uh, sorry minus tau wall by rho okay now we go back to this equation the Bernoulli's equation that we wrote for uh, the wall so we say that 1 by rho del p by del x or dp by dx is actually equal to uc duc by dx so that term also we uh, write So this you write it as um, equal to uc duc by dx. So if I take this to the left hand side, okay, so you take again uh, this becomes a minus sign here. So minus duc by dx will be there and integral of and this multiplied by there is a d by 2. So there is a uh, d by 2 uc into this. So this dc uc into dy2 since uc is independent of y integral of uc dy from 0 to d by 2 is this so i can uh, write this in this so it will again uh, become uh, it will become another u minus uc okay so uh, since uh, negative of this is equal to uc duc by uh, dx so we'll be able to write this as so um, this will become d by dx of integral from 0 to d by 2 of u into u minus uc dy uh, minus d u c uh, sorry plus d u c by dx an integral between uh, 0 to d by 2 of uh, okay u minus u c u c minus u equal to so this term will go it will be just uh, minus the wall by rho and like I say change the sign uh, the throughout everywhere so this becomes uh, d by dx of integral from 0 to d by 2 of u into u c minus u dy and this will become a plus d u c by dx integral from 0 to d by 2 uh, some minus signs uh, somewhere actually they should have been us so this will become u c minus u so some uh, plus minus error i have done in uh, converting this and this will become equal to tau wall by rho okay so you start with uh, this equation and then you take a velocity profile which says um, in the boundary layer y is equal to 0 to delta uh, we assume a quadratic or cubic velocity profile. So we did that in uh, uh, the uh, integral method. So this would come to 3 by 2 y by delta minus 1 by 2 uh, y by delta whole cube 
will be equal to u by u c. Okay, or in this one you would get um, yeah, you this just a moment. The quadratic velocity profile is two uh, y by delta minus y by delta the whole square. U by U C is two y by delta minus y by delta the whole square. Okay, so you use either this or this for the y to uh, y is equal to zero to delta, and uh, y from uh, delta to d by two u is equal to U C. Okay, so use this as the velocity profile, substitute it to this and integrate. And you will get an expression that there are uh, there is one equation that you have uh, you need to solve for u c as a function of x, and another one where you have to solve for delta as a function of x. So you need one more uh, equation for uh, that, and that you get by the conservation of mass equation. Okay, so conservation of mass equation basically says for half of the duct, uh, u bar, which is the inlet average velocity, multiplied by v by two is equal to integral of u dy from um, 0 to d by 2. Okay. So now this, um, if I substitute for 0 to delta this velocity profile and uh, the rest of it this velocity profile and integrate, I will get one more equation. So let me say this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. Using these two equations with these velocity profiles, substituted, I will be able to solve for delta and u c. Okay. So, I uh, will just skip the algebra at the moment and I will directly write uh, the answers. So, if I assumed a cubic or a quadratic profile, then uh, the expressions that I will get will be uh, something like uh, this, that in the cubic profile, I will get an expression like uh, delta by d is equal to um, 4 by 3 times 1 minus u c by u bar, okay. And um, accordingly, if I uh, substitute and integrate and uh, compute, the governing equation will become something like um, d by dx of uh, 19 by 105 uh, uc uh, squared into delta plus duc by dx times um, 3 by 8 into delta u c is equal to tau all by tau. Okay. Now, with this, uh, then I will um, substitute this into this expression for delta, so that this equation becomes entirely in u c, and I uh, solve for u uh, c. Then, uh, defining, of course, the uh, uh, the wall by rho since we have the velocity profile okay in the cubic in the cubic the velocity profile is there so tau, tau wall is mu del u by del y at uh, y is equal to 0 divided by uh, rho uh, so this can be uh, written in terms of um, uh, 3 by 2 into u c by delta to u. Okay. And divided by rho. So, if I um, 
there will be a u square, u square that will come out from this side. So, if I uh, can do that, then uh, can this term would actually become a Reynolds number term. So, I will uh, actually be getting uh, the right side as uh, 9 by 8 RED multiplied by uh, UC by U bar divided by 1 minus UC by U bar. This is an expression that I will get for the, the right hand side that will sit back in there. And substituting this into the expression and then finally eventually uh, simplifying and evaluating and skipping a lot of uh, algebra here. I would encourage that you do that algebra and get these expressions. Um, I'll uh, get for uh, L e by D x is equal to L e. I'll be able to write um, add the u c tilde as it is u c divided by u bar is actually 3 by 2. This is something which comes from the same velocity profile. Um, uh, this, this velocity profile actually can be derived from the fully developed uh, thing. I will show it to you uh, subsequently. But actually the center line velocity comes to 3 by 2 times the mean velocity. This is the thing that you will get by matching the thing. Using this, using this and this, you will be able to get the expression for L e by D as equal to 0 0.1204 and uh, accordingly the CF uh, at any x which is uh, tau wall divided by rho u bar square half rho u bar square will actually come out to uh, 9 by 4 R e D multiplied by uh, uc by u bar divided by 1 minus uc by u bar, okay. Where uc is the central velocity and u bar is the inlet velocity or the mean velocity, let me say. Okay, and for quadratic profile, the same number will come to 0 0.026, okay. Since, since both of these are approximate profiles, the actual value that uh, you would get from uh, a serious analytical solution where you consider a continuously accelerating uh, boundary layer uh, free, free stream for the boundary layer profile, you will get this number something like 0 0.04 RED. Okay, so uh, using the cubic profile you get this, using the quadratic profile you get this and this is the analytical solution. Okay, so this is what um, we uh, get for um, the extent of the boundary layer. So the 0 0.01 uh, value that we had uh, derived in uh, the order of magnitude is actually a, another estimate. Uh, so uh, yeah, in uh, this expression, yeah, we derived this to be 0 0.01 times uh, RED, but this uh, seems to be a slightly underestimated value because we are assuming the velocity to remain constant at the inlet velocity. But if you account for the acceleration, then the expression uh, comes out to, uh, the, the correct value should come to 0 0.04, but with approximate profiles of velocity, you get anywhere from uh, 0 0.026 to 0.12 um, in the uh, interlink. So the actual uh, interlink value typically that should be used is 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 times the RED. That's the expression that we use. Okay. Now, uh, using this, we can um, now split the uh, domain or the split the area of interest into uh, developing region and fully developed region. So in the fully developed region, we have already said V will go to 0 because there is no more migration, cross migration of the flow, all the flow becomes parallel and del U by del X becomes equal to 0. So if I take the momentum equation which is 
u del u by del x plus v del u by del y is equal to minus 1 by rho del p by del x plus u del squared u by del y squared. I have already neglected the other uh, term del squared u by del x squared. Now, in this one, in the fully developed region, you can see that this is also 0 and this is also 0 because v is 0 here and del u by del x is 0 here and therefore, you get this is equal to this. So, you get um, uh, u del square u by del y square is equal to 1 by rho uh, del p by del x and since this is mu is nothing but mu by rho and density is constant, I can cancel it out between the two. Now, I get mu del square u by del y square which is entirely a function of y and del p by del x which is entirely a function of x. So, it is f1 of one uh, y and f2 of x and since they are supposed to be equal, they need to be independently equal to a constant. This is what mathematics demands. If there are two separate independent variables which are orthogonal, which are independent of each other. Then, since the left hand side equation is entirely in y and the right hand side equation is entirely in x, they cannot be equal unless this is independently equal to a constant and this is independently equal to the same constant. So, that is the thing that we do. So, once you have that, you say that for uh, the uh, flat plate, uh, for the parallel plates fully developed flow, the pressure gradient with respect to x becomes a constant in the fully developed region. So, the pressure varies linearly with x. Okay. So, that is one uh, pressure varies linearly with x in fully developed region. And we also know del p by del x is a constant. Okay, so let us say this constant is some, uh, let's say a. Okay, now if I write uh, del squared u by del y square um, is equal to a by mu. Okay, and let's uh, call this as uh, some a one. Okay, so now if I integrate this, so this will eventually become um, since u is not a function of x, this will actually become a uh, full the total differential equation, and so you will get du by dy is equal to a one y plus let's say b, and if I integrate it further u will become a1 y squared by 2 plus b y plus c. Now, for this velocity profile, what are the boundary conditions that I have? The boundary conditions that I have are uh, u is equal to 0 at, um, so now uh, if we are uh, looking at this uh, from uh, the duct point of view, let us take the y coordinate, we are not looking at the boundary layer. So, let us take the y axis from here and uh, so you can say at u is equal to 0 at uh, y is equal to plus or minus d by 2, okay. So, this is uh, duct of size d, so this is plus d by 2 and this is minus d by 2, okay. So, u is equal to 0 at uh, y is equal to plus or minus d by 2 and uh, del u by del y is equal to 0 at y is equal to y, uh, y is equal to 0 and let us also use a variable u is equal to u c at y is equal to 0 and we will evaluate this u c, okay. We have, uh, we need, we have a need for this u c, we will evaluate it from here. So, if I do that, I will say this since del u by del y is 0 at y is equal to 0, if I differentiate this, what I will get is a 1 uh, into uh, 2y by 2, so it will be a, a1y plus b, right, and that is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0, which basically mean b becomes equal to 0, okay, because uh, this is a1 0, so u is equal to 0, so 0 is equal to b is what you get. So, using this condition, 
I'll get b is equal to 0, which basically means that I'll only have this term and this term remaining in the final one and b will go away. Now, suppose I use uh, this condition, u is equal to uc at uh, y1 equal to 0, I'll be able to evaluate uh, uh, a1 and c1. So, uh, u is equal to 0 at y is equal to plus minus d by 2 is the other condition that I'll use. So, let me go to the next page and do that. So, u is equal to a1 y squared by 2 plus c. This is the expression that I have. Now, uh, so at y is equal to 0, uh, u is equal to uc gives me c is equal to uc. Okay, because that y is equal to 0, this goes off, u is equal to uc, so c is equal to uc. Then, uh, at y is equal to uh, plus minus d by 2, u is equal to uh, 0. So, 0 is equal to a1 times d by 2 the whole square by 2 plus uh, uc. So, I will get a1 is equal to uh, 2 uc negative of 2 uc divided by d by 2 whole square. Okay. So, uh, if I go back here then, um, I will get uh, u by uc is equal to, so this a1 with a minus sign, so uh, this 2 and 2 would get uh, cancelled out there and this, uh, so let me just write u, this is, is equal to c is uc minus, this will be uh, 2 uc by d by 2 the whole square into y square by 2. So, this 2 2 get cancelled out. I can take out the uc to this side and I will get uh, u by uc is equal to 1 minus y by d by 2 the whole square. Okay, so, this is your uh, expression that you get. Now, if I also equate integral of u dy from 0 to d by 2 should be equal to u bar times d by 2. So, if I put this expression and integrate, I will actually get from here that uh, u c is equal to 3 by 2 u bar. Okay, so that is the expression that I have actually used in. Uh, this link u c by u bar is 3 by 2, uh, that comes from this expression here, okay. So, then the velocity profile can actually be written as u by u bar is equal to 3 by 2 times 1 minus y by d by 2 the whole square. This is your fully developed uh, velocity profile. So, this is actually a parabola. So, you can see that with y, this uh, goes as a parabola. So, if I um, plot uh, this profile, the profile comes like a parabola like that uh, with uh, 0 at minus d by 2 and plus d by 2. So, if I, uh, this is my y, this is plus d by 2 and minus d by 2 and this is y is equal to 0, I get u is equal to u c which is equal to 2 u bar because your initial velocity profile was more of a, sorry, 3 by 2 u bar, okay. So, the initial velocity profile was like this, u bar, and the final velocity profile is like this, with the central line velocity equal to 1 and a half times this u bar. Okay. So, this is basically the understanding that you get. So, this is the fully developed velocity profile, and this will be independent of <coughs> x. Now, once you have uh, uh, shown this, okay, uh, you can use the second part of the equation, which basically says uh, dp by dx 
is equal to mu del squared u by del y square. Okay. So if you <coughs> use this, this will come out to minus 12 mu u bar by d square. Okay. So this uh, u a profile that I have, if I differentiate with respect to y twice and then multiply it by mu, I get this expression. Okay. And uh, so this is a constant because this is a second order expression, the differentiated twice you get only a constant. So um, I should be able to say the mean velocity u bar will be related to the uh, uh, negative of the pressure gradient. So as pressure goes, as, as you go from increasing x, the pressure gradient has to be negative. So for a positive u, you should have a negative dp by dx or for a negative u, you should have a positive dp by dx. So you will get uh, this is uh, equal to d squared by 12 mu multiplied by uh, minus dp by dx. Okay. And this will be a constant. Because this is the velocity uh, that you had at the inlet. So these are related. If I try to push through this kind of uniform velocity through the profile, this is the mean velocity through, through the flow, then the pressure gradient will come out to this value. Or if I maintain this pressure gradient, the mean velocity will come to this value. That is how the thing is related. Similarly, for pipe flow, the governing equation will be uh, slightly different. Uh, since the uh, acceleration terms on the left hand side uh, that is these terms in this case you will have a u del u by del x plus there will be a, a del by del r term that will uh, come here and uh, this is the x term and this will be in terms of r so the expression you will have will be dp by dx will be equal to uh, mu times 1 by r del by del r, r del u by del r. This is the uh, expression that you have. And uh, if you do the same kind of integration and uh, boundary condition substitution and all that, you would actually get uh, the expression like uh, u by u bar is twice 1 minus r by r naught whole square, where r naught is the radius of the pipe. Okay, so uh, if I have a, a pipe whose radius is r naught, then the velocity profile will be like this. So even inside the pipe, you have suppose this were your uh, u bar initial velocity. The final velocity profile will look like a parabola like this, where this u c will be equal to two u bar. Okay. So u c will be equal to twice u bar in the same in the case of a circular pipe. That is understandable because in the circular pipe, the space available goes on decreasing as you go to uh, like radius closer to zero and zero. Okay. Unlike in the case of a parallel plate, there is a no not a dependency of area with respect to the y coordinate. The okay, area is always dy multiplied by unit depth. But in the case of a circular pipe, as you go to smaller and smaller radii. It's actually 2 pi r dr, the elemental area, and therefore that goes on decreasing. Therefore, the central line velocity increases more. So this is the velocity profile that you get, and uh, corresponding to that, the u bar to dp by dx relationship will be uh, u bar will be equal to r naught square by 8 mu multiplied by minus dp by dx. Okay. Now, uh, using this, if I want to calculate the pressure drop in fully developed regions, so if I have any duct of any arbitrary cross section, okay, so long as the cross section is the same throughout the length, uh, suppose I have a uh, P here and uh, P minus delta P here or P plus delta P. Okay, so the delta P multiplied by A 
would actually balance the shear stress that is there and the surface area of the thing. So, uh, if uh, delta P into A uh, should be equal to tau 1 into perimeter multiplied by the uh, length of the thing. So, the force balance on the fluid would be that delta P multiplied by the area of cross section A should be equal to the shear stress tau 1 multiplied by the area on which it acts which is the perimeter times the length of the pipe. Now, this length. Okay. So, with this basically we will be able to write uh, the expression for delta P in terms of the tau 1. So, let us do that. So, you get delta P is equal to tau wall into perimeter into length divided by the area of cross section. Okay. And this tau wall itself is nothing but uh, so you write perimeter into length divided by area multiplied by mu times del u by del y at wall. Okay. So using this and the velocity profiles that uh, we have we can uh, write for uh, uh, okay, and we can, we can also write this in terms of uh, uh, CF multiplied by half rho u bar squared. So then, if I uh, do that, I'll get a CF multiplied by perimeter into length divided by area into half rho u bar square. So, this is the expression that you uh, get for pressure drop along uh, fully developed flow in a duct. Now, this CF and the perimeter and length will depend on the configuration that uh, we have. So, for parallel planes, using whatever expressions we have already derived, we should be able to show that uh, CF is equal to 24 divided by Re dh, where dh is hydraulic diameter. So, this is from here we define something called a hydraulic diameter. 4 times area divided by perimeter, we call this as a hydraulic diameter. Okay. For circular pipes, you will get this to be uh, equal to the diameter, but for parallel plates, you will get it equal to twice D. So, uh, REDH where DH is equal to 2D, which is 4 times D by 2. That is the half width of the plate that we typically use for the velocity profile and all that, multiplied by 4 will be the uh, DH, hydraulic diameter, and the CF will be 24, uh, 24 by REDH. So, you can calculate REDH and calculate 24 by REDH as the CF multiplied by perimeter into L by A for the case of parallel plates for example, suppose this is one plate and this is another plate which is uh, uh, let us say unit uh, depth, then the perimeter will be 1 plus 1, 2 meters okay? and uh, the area of uh, cross section will be for 1 meter, this is D, so it will be D. So, uh, 4 times D divided by 2 will be 2D. So, this is your DH. Okay. So, 4 times area by perimeter will be 4 times the area of cross section is D times 1 and the weighted perimeter here is 1 meter and here 1 meter, so it is 2 meters. So, you will get uh, 4D by 2 which is 2D. Okay. So, in this uh, case, your uh, uh, expression can be written as uh, delta P is equal to CF times uh, 4 times the hydraulic length, uh, the length divided by the hydraulic diameter multiplied by half rho u bar square is the expression that you get. So, uh, CF is a function of Reynolds number, you can evaluate using this, and the Reynolds number is a function of DH, 
and L by dH can be used like this. And so you can calculate the uh, per pressure drop in a pipe of length L where the flow is fully developed. So this is for the developed in, in the developed region. In the developing region, we have we'll have a higher pressure drop than this, which we'll need to separately do, which we'll do later. Similarly, for circular pipe. So CF will be equal to 16 divided by RVDH, and here VH will actually be equal to B, okay, which is twice R naught. So this is the expression that you'll have, and uh, so here again you'll have CF times L by DH times this. Uh, you might have seen in um, uh, fluid mechanics a diagram called the Moody diagram. which gives a friction factor F called the Darcy friction factor, okay. So Moody diagram gives you something called the Darcy friction factor F and if you uh, compare the expression for this, the 4 CF would be written as F there. So 4 times CF is F and therefore for parallel plates, F will be actually 96 divided by RDH and for circular pipe F will be equal to 64 divided by RDH. Okay, so that is your Darcy friction factor. Um, so this skin friction coefficient CF multiplied by 4 gives you the Darcy friction factor. That is the thing that is plotted in the Moody diagram and we need to be cautious about that. Okay. So we will uh, stop here in this class and in the next class we will uh, start looking at the energy equation for um, the fully developed region and then we will move on to look at the developing flows for thermally as well as hydrodynamic. So that is the uh, material that I wanted to cover in this class. We will stop here and continue in the next class. Thank you.